Hi, I'm Annie West from Westfully Design and I'm going to show you our decorative thread ruler foot. As many of you will know, uh, my husband Bill and I created the first one piece ruler foot for domestic sewing machines, made to fit just about all domestic machines. At the same time that we made our ruler foot, we began working on a decorative thread foot. We wanted a thread that we could sew very, very fine threads through to thicker threads without the need to change to different threads. One of the problems that I found when doing testing was that often the threads would not be caught. So you would sew down and come around a curve and the threads would be hanging loose. And the reason for this is we're working going around in a circle. And unless you can carry the thread so that it gets caught by a straight stitch as it goes around, you are going to wind up with a lot of threads that are hanging loose. We also wanted to have one decorative thread ruler foot. We didn't want three for different size threads, we just wanted one. So we're going to show in this video how we sew different threads using one foot and being able to go around the curves. When we teach quilting with rulers and templates, we teach you to keep your fabric in one plane and move keeping the fabric staying square with the machine. What we're going to do doing this is we will now chase the template. So we will turn, we'll sew down a section, stop, then turn our fabric so that our foot keeps running in a position, come back. We're going to pretty much be running straight in line with the feet of the machine. And that way we can get these threads to catch down. But when you sew with decorative threads, it's fine when we're using a big thick thread um, to use a straight stitch. But if I want to sew something finer, then I put my machine into a zigzag. And we'll explain that. This one has been sewn using a thread which we've attached down with a fine zigzag. I actually like the effect on the back of my quilt, but it makes it possible to sew so many more threads by using that zigzag. This one here has been use, sewn down using a straight stitch. The thread's thick enough so that my stitches will drop into it. This one is using another slightly thicker thread and this one again has been sewn using a straight stitch. This one we have some backtracking on and that works. This is a finer uh, silk knitting yarn and I've sewn that one down using the zigzag again. So by having the ability to use a zigzag or a straight stitch gives us much more scope with what we can use. Decorative threads, I say use them to do a highlight on a quilt. I wouldn't do lots of lines coming back and forth because when I do my travel stitches, they're going to show up a lot if I do it there. So this is using a flat braid. This was sewn down with a straight stitch. So they're the two options that we have. And I'll just grab another sample which shows you a lot of different threads. On this sample, which we'll just move through slowly, I've used 33 different threads. This one here is a cord. It's quite stiff and hard. I could not sew that with a straight stitch, so it's got a zigzag. This is a quite a fine thread, and it has the zigzag. This one's using a straight stitch. This is another silk knitting yarn. This one here is a slightly rounded braid, and if I sew that with the straight stitch, it comes out looking very strange. So it's got the zigzag. This is a wider braid, and this one has the straight stitch going through the middle. This one here is a really little fluffy, spiky, metallic thread. And sewn with a straight stitch, it just missed everywhere. But sewn with the zigzag, it's caught down all the way through. Another braid, one. this braid here has been sewn with a straight stitch, and that one's been sewn with a zigzag. So you can choose which way you want to go. This one here, you can see the grey thread I've used. It's quite a firm, round thread again. This is 
something I like to play with, which is a really stranded embroidery thread, and it just falls apart. If I use a zigzag, it all holds together beautifully. When I use a straight stitch on that, it splits those stranded threads. Another gold, which is a very fine thread, zigzag. And then here we've used, check out the back, a zigzag on this one. So a lot of them are zigzagged, some are straight. The thicker the thread, the easier to use a straight stitch. When we get to the finer threads, go to the zigzags. This one here is a 12 ply wool and it's got a metallic through it and I just sewed a zigzag over the top of that one. This is quite a chunky uh, knitting yarn and that was sewn with a straight stitch. Another metallic using zigzags again. So you can see how the different threads behave using either a straight stitch or a zigzag. I've used a thread which most of the time sort of blends in with these. I did use only one coloured thread to do all of these. You could use it so it blends exactly with that yarn that you're using or you can have it become another feature to your quilting. Our decorative thread ruler foot comes in low shank, high shank and medium shank. Our decorative threaded ruler foot has a unique keyhole which our thread runs through. This keyhole is what makes it possible to use thin threads to thick threads and have the threads caught all the way through using rulers and templates. The foot comes with instructions. In the instructions we explain about straight stitches and zigzags. You'll see in here a couple of times where I've written before stitching make sure the needle clears the DTRF which is our decorative thread ruler foot by hand turning the flywheel bringing the needle up and down to make sure it clears the acrylic center. Because our foot is made of metal you have no flexing in the foot and therefore you are safe to do this technique. I'm now going to put the machine into a zigzag and we'll sew it with a zigzag stitch. This is why we say to turn the hand wheel. I'll put it into the zigzag stitch. If I turn my hand wheel, you can watch where the needle's going to jump across over here. So it's telling me my zigzag is far too wide. I like to use about 1.5 zigzag, which brings it in. Then I'm going to shift my needle across so it comes back into centre. We're at the widest point over there. So now, when I hand turn, my stitch is going to drop there. We'll go back another one. This is why we hand turn. And now my needle is clearing the foot on both sides. You'll get used to knowing where the position of your machine sits and where to put it. Some machines you probably won't be able to put them into that zigzag because they'll have a, just a left or a right zigzag and then you won't be able to center it back like I did with this one. But we're going to now sew this down with a zigzag. So my stitches are clearing the foot all the way through. And as you can see, that thread is being zigzagged over the whole way down. When you are doing decorative thread work, make sure that you have the thread pulling loosely in front of your work and that way it will be able to flow nicely. We're keeping it in that keyhole. So my thread is being carried. I don't have to think terribly much about it. It's just riding in that keyhole space. We'll get to the end, we'll stop. Turn it round. Always keep that so that you're running. You can be slightly off on it. It doesn't have to be perfectly running in line. But what you're trying to do is catch the thread with every stitch because if you miss those threads, the thread with the stitches, you'll wind up with a very messy looking decorative thread that is not held down all the way through. I'm keeping my hand out of the way for you. I usually have my hand up here and then you can't see what I'm doing so I'll go back to having my hand further down. And we're just going to go around this one 
using the zigzag. I'll get to the end. When I stop here, I'm going to go back to doing the straight stitch again. So I'll bring my needle up, put my machine back into straight stitch, move my needle to the position that it is normally in, and I'll again make sure that I clear that keyhole. I know I'm straight stitching, so that's going to be fine. And we'll do another straight stitch down on here. Then we'll show you how to go around a template which has a curve and this one we're dropping back into the center. If I'm not stitching in the center of this, it's going to miss that thread and it will not hold it down. When we've finished sewing using a Dectri thread, I have a large eyed needle with a sharp point and I feed my thread back in as I would with the tails. So that's the end of that done. It's held down everywhere. There isn't a part that we missed. On the back, and I forgot to put batting on this, which uh, backing fabric on this, which is interesting. But there's our zigzag, our zigzag stitch. There is our straight stitch. We're going to sew with this silver thread, which is quite a fine thread, so I'm going to use the zigzag technique. I've brought my top and bottom threads up. Bill wanted me to show you this again. I'm actually going to hold it at the back because my hand gets in the way So you, for the camera. Bring the needle down, bring it up again. Now pulling on the tails that we normally have, it will bring that top decorative thread through. So there's my decorative thread gone through. I'm going to hang on to all three tails line it up in the center, bring my needle down as we normally do. I want my template so it rides to the front like I said before. So we're going to line up the spin effects here. I'm going to be moving the template and fabric at the same time. We are working in free motion so when we're zigzagging it is our movement that is creating the length of the zigzag. The machine is creating the zigzag going back sideways left and right and our movement is creating the stitch length once again and I'm turning my fabric and template together as I'm moving it forward. After you've done a cut this a couple of times it is quite easy to stop here. We're now going to turn the whole lot round and come down from the other side. So what I'm trying to do is keep my thread running so that the thread is in the keyhole and as I sew, my fabric and template are moving. Turn it round again. Just move these tails out of the way. Come down. When I'm doing the spin effects with decorative threads, I'm not going to start at position one and work to the next one. I'm actually definitely going to come down, stop. I will now turn my template so it's going to come in the opposite side. That way I'm not going to have the threads going back and forth and causing extra build up. So once we're back in the correct position, we're going to start at the top again. We want this thread to be caught as best we can. So by moving fabric and template together, you can see, I'm not sure if Bill's drilling down so you can actually see that that needle is dropping either side of those threads. We'll stop here, turn it again. We're going to sew down the next one. A thread this fine is difficult to couch at the best of times, but couching whilst trying to do ruler work where it's not like um, art quilting or um, thread painting, I can go over and over my couching threads when I'm thread painting as many times as I like to make sure it's cut, it's held down. When I'm doing ruler work, I don't have that luxury. I have to make sure I get it caught down the first time because we cannot go back and forth because it just will not look very pretty. So we'll go down and do the next one. Again, keeping that line running. So. 
I hope you can see how I'm turning fabric and template together. They stay together quite nicely. Stop here again. Turn the whole lot. If when you turn you do take it offline, it's easy. Just put it back in the correct position and keep going. So we're going to come down this one. Stop here. Give it a turn. When you feel that it's starting to um, get away from you, just stop. It's like all of our quilting. Don't uh, try and battle to keep something happening when you know you'd be better off stopping, repositioning your hands. We've always taught that with our quilting with rulers and templates. Repositioning is really easy. Trying to chase something around is not so easy. And this will be the fourth one. There are certain templates which will be easier to do with decorative threads than others and certain techniques. Using decorative threads and doing template quilting is absolutely fabulous. One little tip that I'm going to show you which I like to do is if Bill can follow me up with this spool of thread. Thread's down here. Uh -huh. Okay, my thread's just sitting here and I spool out thread onto the piece I'm working on. To keep the thread out of my way, I will put it onto my thread holder at the top. Then I'll just spool out a few bits of thread as it goes. So we're going to come back and keep sewing this one. As I said, normally I keep my finger somewhere around here, just loosely holding that thread. Because it's got a lot of kink in it, I want to make sure it stays in that keyhole. And here we go down, we're back in the center. I'll stop here. threads off. And we have one beautifully couched down decorative thread. It is caught all the way through. As I said, this is quite a fine thread. With a straight stitch, I would miss that thread all the way. It would be caught here and there every so often. I've played with uh, using couching feet on my machines, just the standard couching feet that you can buy, and found that going one way you'll catch it a lot, going the other way you don't, and you can miss two or three inches and not even notice. With this technique, we don't want to be missing those two or three inches at all because it will sit quite strangely on our quilt. I'll just take those away. And we'll put one more thread in and do another. Uh, I'll finish the spin effects off in a different thread. I'm going to show you using a stranded embroidery thread. What happens if I use a straight stitch to go through that embroidery thread is this embroidery thread tends to separate like that. So I have six separate strands. And when I'm using a straight stitch to do something like this, the needle will go between those strands and it will pop up out all over the place looking like that and it's quite ugly. Where, as to have it like this, looks really pretty. Especially when you're playing with the metallics, which this is one of their metallics. Again, I'll show you how to bring that thread through the hole. Take the thread, pull it back so that it's caught on that top thread. Come down, bring your needle back up pull your top and bottom thread tails, it will go through the hole by itself. We're going to use a grey thread here, the same one as I've been using, and you will actually see my zigzag stitches appear on here much more than before. We're just going to put a spin effects in going into the four corners this time. Same thing as before, coming down, so we're following that foot, the template line and my thread is going to stitch either side of my decorative thread. Stop, give it a turn. And it's got a little um, zigzag that's going to show up in the gray 
on top of it. As we said, this is not a technique that everyone's going to want to use, and some machines you won't be able to do this zigzag, but you can use the straight stitch. And you'll find the threads that work really well with that straight stitch. Generally your thicker threads, the braids, um, the threads that are the flat braids which are gorgeous, uh, things like this thread don't behave well with a straight stitch because it splits. But try it, find out which ones you like to use. I can tell you something looks great, you might like something else. You might find a thread I haven't tried. Um, boucle threads will go through here. Uh, some of the um, twisted threads with knots in them will go through here quite happily because we're working on a zigzag. We have the keyhole at the front, which is doing the job of keeping our thread running in the correct position. And we're not having to rely on having a very tiny hole to run through and catch with a straight stitch. I'll show you a thread in a moment which is quite different. So we're back in the centre and I'll just keep sewing these and we'll, we'll come back when I'm finished. This is our block finished. I've used three different decorative threads and showing you a straight stitch and a zigzag using a stranded thread which would normally cause a lot of problems. These are metallics and they all have their different reasons for why some work better than others. This is a beautiful metallic that I said I'd show you. It's round and very firm and it does couch down beautifully but you need to use this with a zigzag because if you try to run a needle through this, it will go sideways all over the place. Doing a straight stitch on this particular thread is not fun, but when it couches down, it is really pretty. So if you have a thread that you really think would look nice in your quilt, try it. Try it on a scrap of fabric. It is for adding that sparkle, the pop. It's for giving another definition to your quilt. When you're doing template quilting, doing your decorative thread work, then cutting away gives a whole other element again to your quilting. So I hope you enjoy playing with our decorative thread ruler foot. There's so much you can do and, oh I was going to say before, that's grey on the pink and I think it looks quite nice. Bill's got to come down and find it for me. The grey stitching in the zigzag over the pink gives you another element to it. If I had matched that pink thread up with the one I was sewing down, it'd disappear. Even though it's a zigzag, it would still disappear. So I hope you enjoy playing with our decorative thread ruler foot. Again, as I said, we have made it in low shank, high shank and medium shank. And to do threads from... 12 weight threads all the way up to 12, 14 ply wools. It's about as far as I went. I don't think I have anything thicker. Um, just one decorative thread ruler foot is all you need to do your ruler work. Remember with the templates, there are some templates that are going to be easier to use than others to do this technique. But try it, find out what works. You might find something that I haven't thought of working, tiny little circles, I don't think I'd do half inch circles with it, but somebody out there will, so enjoy.